welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM announced a horrible set of financial results this week and warned of more tough times ahead. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the state of the utility. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. Things look really dismal at the state owned utility. Yes, I think there was an expectation that it would be bad and it turned out just to be exactly that. So we saw a 2.3 billion rand loss and that's really the full group. If you look at the utility business, which is the business that most people want to know about, that generates, that uh, transmits and distributes power, that business actually made a four bi uh, over four billion rand loss. So it's, it's really uh, struggling uh, to keep its head above water and it's actually, it's not keeping its head above water. And it's facing a number of headwinds on a number of fronts. We all know the main one being that uh, governance failed at Eskom and uh, the utility became sort of the epicenter of the state capture allegations and that cleanup is now underway. Um, and I suppose there's a lot of focus on that and there needs to be. Uh, but in the meantime, there's some fundamental issues facing Eskom around its uh, sustainability. And uh, at the moment, uh, that sustainability doesn't look that good because it's got into a position where it's had these mega projects that are delayed for many years and are over budget. And it's had to raise a lot of debt uh, to fund that. And it's got to the point where the interest payments have just really climbed uh, to a, a very big portion so of uh, the utilities uh, uh, budget every year that it has to fund. So this year it's, it's got a funding gap of 72 billion that it has to close. And the reason why it's so high, uh, it would normalise here would be around the 50 billion rand mark, is that you will remember um, in late last year, um, before the change in the board in late January, which was an urgent intervention, Eskom couldn't actually raise any capital. There was a lack of trust, a trust breakdown between the funders or the lenders and Eskom due to the government's failures. And only at the sort of 11th hour was Eskom able to fund, uh, get a 20 billion rand uh, bridging finance basically package which got them through to the end of their financial year. So they have to cover that loan which in, uh, matures now in August plus their normal funding requirement for the year. So it's a really big amount that they have to raise. Do you think it will be able to raise the needed debt to get through this year? Well, as I mentioned it is a big level, uh, 72 billion, but there are some signs. Um, Eskim itself is confident that it's able to close the funding gap for the year. So that would be to the end of March 2019. And we already see signs uh, of some of the uh, funding coming through with the announcement of the Chinese Development Bank giving a little bit more finance to Eskom. There's discussions underway with the, uh, the BRICS New Development Bank uh, about getting some finance. And then there does seem to be a little bit of a restoration of credibility in the governance structures which is it will allow them to approach their normal, um, the, both the commercial lenders as well as the capital markets. So Eskom will be undertaking a roadshow in the, in the coming months um, to both uh, domestic and international uh, lenders to try and convince them that this is still a case. And in the process, they'll have to be explaining that, uh, you know, that it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Uh, they are really warning that 2019 uh, financial year is going to be tough. We're, we know that, for instance, uh, uh, the 0% wage increase uh, that they wanted to uh, uh, almost enforce has not panned out as is. Uh, there's still discussions with Labour. There's a new issue around bonuses which are, non, which are not budgeted for and whether those will be included in the mix. So that's a bit of an uh, unknown at the moment. And then obviously the coal costs are a worry. They continue to rise at levels ahead of inflation. So there are uh, elements for that the funders will have to be made aware of. But I think one of the key messages will be that uh, the governance uh, stabilization is underway. There's a big focus on cost containment, both on the capex side uh, to try and restrict that to around the 45 billion rand a year level as well as uh, on, the, um, on the operational costs. 
uh, obviously, um, other than labor, and <laughs> it's, it's going to be quite a tricky uh, issue for 2019. So they'll have to be looking beyond that. And they, I think they'll also be sending the message that there's, there's a review of the, the operating model, the business model uh, of, of Eskim that will uh, hopefully in the medium term right size the business. The next big milestone will be the publication of a new corporate plan. What can we expect? Yeah, this is the big next milestone because at the moment uh, lenders are being forced to shoot in the dark a little bit because we know that the current business model is not sustainable. Um, and uh, we know that if it carries on like this, uh, uh, Eskim's really going to have a massive debt burden that's going to have to be financed either through the, the consumer or the taxpayer. And the current trajectory, Eskim's debt rises over the next four years from around 380 billion currently to 600 billion. So you can imagine what's going to happen, not just on paying back the capital on that amount, but the interest payments, it's going to balloon. And then obviously we've got the tariff hikes that have got to a point where I think there's a view that it really any further sharp hikes is going to undermine a really flat lined demand uh, because consumers now have a lot more choice than they would have had maybe in 2008 when we first entered the load shedding crisis uh, because of what's happened on the renewable energy prices. So we've seen solar over the last five years fall dramatically by about 80%. Wind, because it's a more mature technology, has fallen less sharply, but, but even that has been about 60%. Uh, so these are now options, especially for businesses that have rooftops, uh, like shopping centers, like factories, that can now install and defect to a certain extent from uh, sales from either the municipal, municipal distributor or Eskom directly. And this is a worry uh, for Eskom's top line and we've already seen that there has been no top line growth at Eskom for some time other than through the tariff increases. So the business model has to change. There's a far reaching review underway and September's a, a big date because that corporate plan is really going to define uh, the state of, or the, the transition that Eskom is going to have to undertake to, towards sustainability. That is the watchword, the transition to sustainability. It fits very much with the energy transition that is underway both in South Africa and the rest of the world. And Eskom having to fit into that transition. It can't expect the transition to fit into it any longer. It's going to have to adapt itself or it's going to face serious problems as we're already seeing on the financials. So there's going to be a lot of attention on that corporate plan, what Eskom's going to look like, how it's going to manage the fact that it's saying that it's at least one third overstaffed at the moment at 48,000 employees for its current output. Uh, so managing the staff issues, managing the structural issues, and then obviously managing the, 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 the financial issues, including the debt repayments, without having to resort to massive tariff hikes, which has been the trend over the last 10 years, and without having to resort to further bailouts, which has also been a partial trend over the last 10 years. So it's, a, it's going to be a crucial uh, intervention, and I think there's going to be a lot of eyes on it. Uh, what is a little bit of a, a, a worry is that the timing of it is that, you know, the regulator is waiting for the next uh, multi-year pr price determination application. That's usually based on the corporate plan. Um, the expectation was that that should have been in uh, in August. This plan's only going to be out in September. They may have to ask for a little bit more time from the regulator. But you know, the regulator also, the clock is ticking because the, they have to have public hearings. They have to allow the country to have their say on Eskom es tariff application. So it's a bit of a cart before the horse issue. And it's going to be s interesting to see how that is managed. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.